Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and I am in the famous Columbus Circle, one of the most popular tourist destinations here in Manhattan, where there's a mall, and across from the mall is Central Park. Right past that golden statue there is Central Park. Now, we're not here for sightseeing. We're here to eat sushi and world-class sushi. At the top of this mall is Masa, widely regarded as one of the best sushi restaurants in the world, not just the US, the world. Masa is the only sushi restaurant outside of Japan to have three Michelin stars. Now, I've always wanted to try Masa and I've been really curious about it, but there's only one problem with Masa, it's price tag. And I don't mean just like a few hundred bucks, Masa is a thousand dollars per person. I'm being serious, a thousand dollars. Pretty wild. No matter how good food is, there's no way it's worth a thousand dollars. On top of that, even if I was willing and able to afford that, which I'm not really, but I guess we can make a GoFundMe account, they don't allow any pictures or video inside. So even if I shelled out the money, there'd be no point because I can't even make a video for you guys. Luckily for us though, right next to Masa, Masa opened a Bar Masa, which is a more approachable restaurant. It's not a thousand bucks. It's still pretty expensive. It's still about a hundred to a few hundred bucks for an omakase meal, but at least a hundred or so bucks is within reason. And at least I'm able to afford it. I'll bite the pain in my heart. And unlike Masa, I can take video and pictures inside. Here's the thing though, it's not just a more casual, watered down, worse sushi restaurant that's just coasting off its name. Bar Masa is the same quality as Masa. Here's proof, I called them and I asked. Mm -mm. Thank you for calling Bar Masa. This is Vicky, just speaking. Can we help you? Uh, hi, yes. Is Bar Masa, is it the same food as at Masa? So it's a, it's a bit, um, it's similar because it's the same chef, Chef Masa just created a, a smaller amakase menu for more masa. Mm -hmm. So for more masa, the amakase is $295 without um, taxes or beverage included. And then um, the price of masa is $1,000. Besides the price and some of the portions, is the food the same quality? Yes, it's the same quality. Okay. Yeah, it's just, you know, masa is, of course, top because masa is there and, you know, most of the time it's the one making the food and also because it's a 26 course. So, as you can see by my phone call, it's the same food, it's the same recipes, it's not a thousand bucks mostly because it's not made by masa himself personally, but it should be the same quality. So let's find out if three Michelin star sushi really is worth the hype, and if Sushi Master Masa is also worth the hype. So come on, let's go. Okay, so I'm inside Bar Masa. Now this is not Masa itself. This is a kind of counterpart to Masa, like a more casual one and a little bit cheaper. Let me just show you the menu real quick. Now, just off the bat, they have an omakase, it looks like. And as much as I would like to try this, everything just looks so good and it looks like such a big portion. Uh, I'm just sorry, it's just $2.95 a person. It's a little bit beyond my price range. While everything here just looks delicious, we'll have to wait for the channel to get bigger before we try this. Luckily for us, they also have a good lunch special, a really generous looking lunch special prices for such a fancy restaurant. They have a bunch of bentos and yeah, I mean, some of these things like hibachi chicken, uh, sukiyaki, maybe it's a little bit more expensive than at other Japanese restaurants, but for a restaurant of Masa's caliber, definitely not as bad as it could be. This omakase tasting though is up our alley. Let's do seven pieces of nigiri sushi, 98 bucks, so not cheap still, but at least within striking distance of what we can afford. And on top of that, now I just want to show you a little bit more of their menu. They have some other cool things. They have not just udon and soba, but they also have pastas made from fish, fish pasta. Yo, we're gonna have to try this one day. Remind me to try this in the follow-up video. Fish pasta, Peking duck foie gras, wow. 
we will be ordering one more thing a la carte. Our Masa Toro Toro roll, which apparently is what Masa is famous for. 78 bucks is rather steep, but it's okay guys. I'll do it for you guys. Let's order. Okay, it looks like our appetizers have arrived. Now, it looks like this is some sort of kale salad, it looks like. It looks really fresh. Everything is shredded nice and thinly, like it's like julienne, sort of. Everything is julienne, so really, really gotta try this. And a miso soup. Now, in my experience, even at really nice Japanese restaurants, miso soup often is just that, just miso soup. It's just a paste dissolved in water. After all, not really too much to it, but let's try this before it gets too cool. Mmm. Mmm. At the end of the day, it is still miso soup. Like, it's not gonna exactly blow you away, but this tastes like almost like a more elevated miso soup. Like, all the ingredients taste more fresh. I think they put some, I tasted something a little bit chewy. So the tofu has nice texture and is nice and fresh, but I think, let's see here. Oh yeah, yeah, they have some mushrooms inside it. And the mushrooms actually add some nice texture, add a little bit more protein. Seaweed tastes very fresh as well. I mean, none of these flavors are gonna blow you away, but I think Japanese food in general, it can often be pretty simple but beautiful in its simplicity. So when you eat good Japanese food, it's still simple, but all the little things are just done really well, so you get a great dish. Now, it's interesting that oftentimes in Japan, people will sort of pick up the soup and drink directly from it, as opposed to using a spoon, so nice that they kind of give you some handles here. Ah, really good. I mean, even though it still tastes like miso soup, it's not completely different, but it just tastes so fresh and it tastes really healthy and comfortable to drink. I'm being serious. I've been to Japan, but I think that's the best miso soup I've ever had. Let's try this salad, why don't we? Mmm, mmm. Wow, same with that salad. That salad just tastes so fresh. I really, really like how finely it's like julienne. Like it's so thin, the strips, the nuts are quite nice. They add good texture. It's just so fresh and it looks fresh too. It's got a nice gleam on it and that dressing is just perfect. It's not too strong, it's not too light. And it also provides a nice shine to the salad so that it just looks really, really fresh and beautiful. And you know, they say you eat with your eyes first. And while this is bar masa and not masa, hey, these Michelin guys know what they're doing. Mm. It almost has like a nice minty flavor. I don't often like that, but I like it here. Wow, excellent. Thank you. Okay. Move on with the Japanese sea green with a combo seaweed. Okay. We have a tuna roll in salmon. We have uh, will be the middle one. We have kampachi amberjack, a fruit, cucumber roll. We have aji, and the last one will be the deep sea snapper with the daikon pot. Okay, thank you. Wow, check it out. So the server explained each of these, but unfortunately, I don't remember what everything is. But uh, you know, we're just gonna do our best based on what we remember. I gotta say though, the quality of this fish is looking pretty good and everything is pretty beautiful in appearance, delicate looking in presentation. Even this soy sauce that they poured for us, it just seems like a higher quality soy sauce. Like it looks a little bit lighter in color. Uh, something about it just looks different than your normal shoyu soy sauce that you get from like a bottle. You said you make the soy sauce in-house? Yes, our soy sauce are in-house and we also make our own thing. Oh wow. Is the wasabi grated as well? Yes, for oh. wasabi. Oh wow, thank you so much. Did you hear that? They say they make everything in-house. The soy sauce is made in-house, the ginger is made in-house, and the wasabi is hand-grated, they said. That is extremely labor-intensive, if that really is true. The taste will say if it's true, because, you know, I've eaten hand-grated wasabi, and it definitely does not taste like that tube stuff. First, let's uh, palate cleanse a bit. Mmm. Mmm. 
Now that's some good pickled ginger. They said that they were making it in-house and at first I was like, pickled ginger made in-house? What's the difference, right? It's just ginger, right? But it's not too strong, it's not too pickly. It tastes really fresh. So I believe them that this is made in-house. Sushi, come into the light. Let's try a tuna roll on its own. Okay, so it's good. You know, I'm not gonna say it's not good. Like, it's very fresh. You can tell that this is really fresh tuna, really fresh fish. It's a really generous portion as well, not too much rice. And it's rolled and cut really tightly and well, and you know, the perfect looseness and tightness level. But I do have to be honest that this doesn't really taste too much better than your normal Japanese decent sushi restaurant. Like, they've done everything well. It's not too tight, not too loose, but if I can be honest, this tastes just above average, not really mind-blowing. Maybe maki rolls are just like that. But let's see if the soy sauce makes a big difference. Mmm. 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 That's why you eat Michelin star food. They weren't kidding when they said they make this soy sauce in-house because they must be. I've never tasted any soy sauce like this in my whole life and I've been eating Asian food my whole life. I've even been to Japan and China and Taiwan. I've never had anything like this. The difference between this and your store-bought soy sauce is that it's not too salty and it's not too artificial in taste. Unless you have this, I really don't know how to explain it. Like it tastes light but not bland. It just tastes like the way soy sauce should taste. Let's add some wasabi and see how that elevates the game, if at all. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I have had hand grated wasabi before from scratch. Only a few places do it. I know Sushi Nakazawa does it. I know Sushi 35 West does it, which was opened by former students of this place. But hand grated wasabi, it's just so much better. It just tastes fresher, not too spicy, not too pungent. Amazing. But now let's turn our attention to the sushi. I'm presuming this is yellowtail, maybe. Looks like it's got a nice rice to fish ratio. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, that's pretty good. Now that fish has a really cool texture. It tastes fresh, it's tender, but it also has like a chew to it. And usually when you think chewy fish, you think that's not good, but it's like a pleasant chew. It's like when you eat pasta and you like it to be al dente because you want there to be a chew. That was excellent. Lean bluefin tuna. Oh man, this will be a evergreen forever sushi piece. This and salmon. Oh wow, oh, well that was out of this world. Oh, I think that was the best lean tuna piece I've ever had in my life. Really, really good. Once again, the ratios were perfect. The fish to room temperature rice. Another thing I need to mention is that the rice is not overly seasoned. It's not too sweet, not too vinegary. It's like the perfect complement to the fish. That fish also, that tuna just melts in your mouth. Amazing tuna flavor. Should I use one of those corny foodie cliches? It tastes like the sea. Now it just has such depth of tuna flavor, but not due to being fatty. Like it's not like you're just tasting some savory fat like in Toro. It just has like great natural tuna flavor and it melts in your mouth. Perfect temperature as well. Now my personal favorite, even though this is the most basic one, salmon. Can't wait for this. It just looks so good. All right, my expectations are pretty high after that tuna. Mm. Oh. oh, man. Maybe it's just because I like salmon a lot. Salmon has always been my favorite, but that, uh, I'm just gonna say it, that was hands down the best sushi piece I've ever had in my life. It's a cliche, melt like butter. That salmon literally disintegrates in your mouth. It literally is like buttery salmon. Uh, I had no idea that was even possible. It feels like it like completely dissolves in your mouth. And it's so buttery, so, so rich, like a rich flavor, almost creamy. That was incredible. Let's see how the <laughs> cucumber roll is. I mean, cucumber roll is like the lamest of the rolls, right? But we gotta try it. Right. 
that one was only okay. I mean, it's cucumber. It's just cucumber with rice and seaweed. How good could it get? They could be using the best cucumber in the world and it's still just gonna be a cucumber. So that one was only okay. They did a good job with it by like julienning the cucumber. Like I like all the crunchy bits and the texture, but once again, it's just a cucumber. So this one's only okay. Okay, can't wait, thank you. Let's see if the masa toro toro lives up to the hype. But first, let's finish these real quick, because, you know, we don't want to waste food. All right, this toro is looking pretty good. Can't wait to eat this. You know, it's a roll. I was expecting more of a small roll, like the tuna and the cucumber rolls, but this almost kind of looks like a thicker kimbap, if you guys know what that is. It's like a Korean savory sushi with meat in it. It's eaten often for lunch. So, whoops, I don't want this to fall apart, so let's just grab it. Mmm. 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 This Toro is really interesting. It really has good aftertaste. When I was eating it, the first half, I was like, okay, it's a little big, it's a little thick, it's a little busy. Like there's fatty tuna in it, but there's also some greens in it, and it tastes like there's too much going on. And at first I thought it was only okay. But then when you start to finish chewing it, it has an amazing aftertaste. Like it turns out that all the flavors do work together. And as you're chewing, and that rice and that seaweed kind of gets ground up and you'll really get to that toro that's left through those layers. Ah, oh, it's blissful fatty tuna heaven. I would kind of prefer if they did less of these greens. I kind of wish they did away with this and just kind of gave me a bigger piece of toro. Although I guess then there wouldn't be such a complex flavor, but I kind of prefer things to be simple. I wish they just gave me a big chunk of fatty tuna. Let's try it with the soy sauce. The final thing we're gonna eat today. Maybe this will help elevate the flavor a little bit. Mmm. Oh yeah, that was it. Mmm. Oh. Somehow the soy sauce that they made just goes with everything. All those complaints I had earlier about there being too many greens, about how this was too busy, how I wish they just gave me more Toro. It all just, you know, vanishes once you add that soy sauce. Somehow, I don't even know how it's doing it. You add it to the soy sauce and the whole roll just makes sense. Like it covers up the leafiness and the coldness and the crunchiness of the vegetable and it pairs perfectly with that fatty tuna and... Mmm. Mmm. Hmm. Wow. Very, very good. Very good. I'll get the check whenever. Sure. Very tasty. Can I get a box for that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Wow, but honestly, I cleaned the whole plate, or plates. I mean, they took them all away because it's really good service here, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it that I ate everything. It was just so good. As for my verdict, I gotta say, Chef Masa, I was skeptical, but you did it, man. Now, if I had went to Masa and spent a thousand bucks, maybe I would feel different. I would feel that money pain in my heart, but at this place, paying a fraction of the price, still a lot of money, but much less money for less food, but still the same quality food, and I presume the same service. I thought it lived up to the hype. I thought it was excellent, and I'm glad I had this experience. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. If you've been to Bar Masa before, if you've been to THE Masa before next door, or let me know what your favorite sushi place is. Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. Time to pay now, and Huh. Still quite a hit to the bank account. Until next time, I'll see you later.